Here at BAE Systems in Walton, Lancashire, they're used to the roar of jet engines. They build and have tested Eurofighter Typhoons here. Today, however, I'm going to take a flight in an aircraft which is much slower than a Typhoon. This is a Jetstream 31 small passenger aircraft. It's a design from the 1980s, but it's currently used by BAE Systems as a flying testbed for technology which could lead to fully autonomous aircraft. Moyne McHugh is head of research here. It's tried and tested, very well flown and understood aircraft from the outside, but on the inside, it's filled with the latest technology. That technology will eventually allow this aircraft to fly itself autonomously. Today, they're testing the plane's ability to detect and avoid clouds, as well as testing its satellite communication systems. But takeoff and landing will still be handled by human pilots, and the plane will be remotely controlled at some points too. So how does this fit into the autonomous equation, if you like? Because at the moment, it's effectively a remotely controlled aircraft. It is, yeah. And really, with autonomous operations, you need to progressively expand the boundary. You can't start with such a big bang right out at the full range of capability and operations. This humble-looking outbuilding houses the ground station. Here, a pilot will remotely fly the plane and he can ensure that it will react to instructions from air traffic control. Uh, what's in time? Good afternoon, Traffic Zero One Golf Radio Check. Now, I would expect to see a joystick and images coming through from the cockpit, but you're not going to be flying like that at not all, are you? Like Everything is through, as you can see, the uh, numbers yeah. that we have there with the indicator, speed, altitude, heading. Time for takeoff. These flights are taking place in uncongested airspace. Today, we'll be flying over the Irish Sea. Uh, one minute to hand over point. Mission loaded is... To help fly itself, this aircraft uses data from satellites, as well as identifying radio signals broadcast by other aeroplanes, so it knows what it's sharing the sky with. It's also fitted with a camera that can see other air users, even if they're not emitting warning signals. So right now, the pilots aren't actually flying the aircraft. This gentleman right here is from that sort of 15-year-old Dell laptop that's running Windows XP. At this point, the aircraft is flying autonomously, with a human watching what it's doing. They've handed control of the autopilot over to the computing in the back, which I'm controlling through this laptop. Uh, and once we're established on the route, I can hand control of the computing over to climb on the ground via the satellite. So that little shed light building that we were in earlier, with Clive sat in front of the uh, computer, he's now flying the aircraft. Over the course of the testing of this aircraft, it's going to have to perform a variety of different complex tasks. For instance, it's going to have to recognise and avoid bad weather. Not just weather, but other aeroplanes too, and it will eventually be able to select a safe landing spot and touch down by itself. Today we can't really test its weather detection abilities though, as unusual if the UK, we have a cloudless sky. BAE suggests that autonomous aircraft could be used to perform dirty, dangerous or repetitive tasks. But could this technology be introduced into commercial air travel? At the moment, all uh, commercial aircraft have a, have a set number of crew. Um, some of, there are programs in existence that are looking at how you reduce crew, either planned from the outset or in the case of um, perhaps an emergency, you've got the autonomous system as a, as a fallback so that you can, still, you can still have perhaps a two crewed aircraft on a certain length of flight and things like that, but one of the crew happens to be an autonomous helper as opposed to a real person. We're going to end up in the Hudson. Sorry, say again, Cactus. But what happens when things go wrong? This is the captain. Brace for impact. While aerospace manufacturers are exploring the possibility of fewer cockpit crew, what do commercial pilots think? To find out, we paid the British Airline Pilots Association a visit. So many decades of looking at aviation has brought us to the position where we've come to the conclusion that it's best to have two pilots in the cockpit 
Because if you have, if you have reduced that to one, then the problem you've got then, you've got no one to cross-check each other's decisions. Take, for example, the, the miracle on the Hudson, Captain Sullenberg. So when the aircraft lost both its engines, the pilots had to have a discussion, they had to go through a thought process, and they decided that their only course of action was to land on a river. Now, no computer could be programmed to do that. The flight testing of autonomous aircraft continues, but the debate about regulating them and how they're going to be used has really only just begun.